Good morning, everybody. Maggie says good morning, too. Yeah, she says it. <laughs> Hi, everybody. And just a short video here today, I think. And I want to thank those that have been contributing to PayPal for our all of our fun in the future. And I'd like to thank Jack because <laughs> he also helped us out. And I'd like to thank jo Joanne, a good friend down in the States. And I'd also like to thank uh, Granny. <laughs> yes, um, I really appreciate it. And uh, we're just going to let it do what it does. And we're just going to continue making things and having ideas we're already discussing. And uh, one way or another, we'll get it done, and it'll be fun. So um, I just want to say the, the things we ship are free. It's just the shipping that is going to cost. Okay, so good enough about that. I wanted to show you a couple things about some orchids and what's going on. So the two new minis, which I will get. Can you stay there? Hmm? Okay, two new things. This is their little spot. I haven't turned the misters on yet, but I will because it's early in the morning here and it's already 60 degrees outside and a little warmer in here. And I want to talk about the two minis that I ordered and what I'm doing with, doing with them to uh, switch them over to bark because I want to get rid of the moss, but I want to do it slowly, only because they're babies. But you can do this with your older plants too. You can slowly pick out the moss, but I want to show you how and why I'm doing it, how I am. So uh, the orchids are back outside since yesterday because we had them in because we had a cold spell, but now it looks safe. So. They're out, and it is always about 10 degrees warmer in here than it is outside. And at night, just in case we're leaving the doors open because this patio locks, and we have a guard dog. <laughs> yeah, she might be little, but she's a guard dog. So um, I'm just going to show you this one up close. Now, this is the one we're talking about. This is Fal Alfinia. So, as you see, there is some things happening. But what I've done, and you may think, I know a lot of people keep moss on the top. Where I'm starting picking moss out is off the surface. Any moss on the surface, and I had it quite thick, I'm picking off. And yes, the top dries quicker. And I can also water it more because it's in a small pot. And on the top, it's going to stay drier. But on the bottom, where I'm still adjusting, because of the bark, it'll flow through quickly. And this is why I'm doing it this way. Because these new roots that are growing in here, I want them to be something like um, aerial roots. So I want them to, to be used to the air, and uh, even though I could put bark, once they get a little bit bigger, I can put a little bark, and they'll be under the bark, but they're more used to the air, and they're not used to extra moisture. And while the roots inside of the pot grow during this growing season, these ones will be getting very hardy. I've done it slowly, and I'll keep eventually picking more and more out. And these roots may keep this plant healthy longer because they're going to adjust. And we still have flowers coming on her. I have no, seen no sign of weak leaves. You know, you can shake hands with all your orchids every morning, and you can, you can get an idea how they feel by the handshake, just like people, you know. 
if it's a limp handshake, something's wrong. You know, maybe there's something you need to do with that relationship. But it's firm and loving like a nice hug. Then you know it's, everything's fine. And so I do touch my orchid leaves a lot, and that's what I do. So this is that one. And slowly, every watering day, I'll pick a little bit more bark out. It will adjust slowly. Yes, because I've changed media, uh, it will have to grow new roots to suit that media, but maybe on a slower basis where these ones on the surface, because I don't have them saturated all the time, they will be getting stronger and stronger every day. And so, then we have, that was the one I got free from Roehampton Orchids. Now we have, um, I have trouble with this name. Help me out with that one. So I've also picked some bark off her, and I want you to see what's happening in here. See, these new roots. Now they're, they're not basically aerial roots, but they are closer to the surface. They're getting more air. They'll be more used to it. Even as the moss slowly disappears, they are becoming hardier and hardier. So that's the first thing. Anything I change, I want to share with you. So that's the first thing. And I have them. I'm going to show you a close-up of how they are back here after. There we go. And um, I want to show you a close-up. Uh, the other thing that's really important is a lot of people, as it gets warmer, their air conditioners are on. And orchids, uh, even in the greenhouses, they, turn, they want the temperatures warm when they're getting growth. And uh, having the same temperature in your house all year through, you will get growth, but not as fast and hardy growing as if they're getting that. Uh, 10 degrees warmer. So if it's usually 70 Fahrenheit in your house, then 80 to 85, even 80 to 90 is optimum growth period. That warmth is telling them to grow. And that's why some people even in the winter have to put heating pads under their orchids to help with that warmth or uh, different things like that. To keep them warm, it's to keep them happy. But during this season, uh, that extra warmth, no matter how you can get it, uh, one of our subscribers in Australia, he said he, he got a hold of a, a, a small greenhouse and it had plastic on it, took the plastic off, put screening over the top, and his orchids inside, and uh, you can have them on their patio. They're safe. They're still getting air. A tiny fan would even be good if you're enclosing them because they're, you know, it will help with the humidity and all being close together. That's another reason I group them together to keep that humidity um, going good. So I'm just going to get up and I want to show you some close-ups because uh, the big new orchid in the big pot where I put two, well, one of the subscribers, see how you guys are so beneficial to me as I try to be to you, is she said, um, it looked like one of the leaves had split right up the center in the comments, she said that. And I, of course, came and looked at the orchid because I put the one I got for Mother's Day and the one I already had in the same pot. I came out and looked at mine and I thought, well, it, you know, it looks fine. It must be a scar she saw or something. So then Jack's out here and he's looking and he's got to be a little bit of an orchid fanatic too. He says, look at this. And then he says, give me some pipe cleaners. We got to, we got to fix this because there was at least three leaves with little splits right up the center uh, coming. So we got the green uh, pipe cleaners, which we're using for everything lately. 
and uh, kind of tied the leaves and I've been misting them every morning and I haven't done it yet and they're in the pot that's about all we can do and hopefully they they don't keep opening and opening and drying and drying so I want to show you that and, and if in the last video you thought what she got on that orchid that's what it is so we're going to do this and then I got an outside project I want to show you. I'll shut down the computer and add it on to this one. And you'll get to see outside while I'm doing something and a few other neat things happening out there. So let's just do this first. Okay. Okay, here we are. You see? Now... They're very, some of them it's not showing up real quick, but you can see a light line. And if you shake hands with this new one, this is the one for Mother's Day, it's a limp. It's not happy. As you know, it was really in thick, thick moss. And uh, over on this leaf too, let's see if we can go over here. This one here, it's still a little firmer. And it also had the split coming up the leaves. And over here, this is probably the one she saw. So these are sort of... Now if you look at my orchid, it had some dry. And I'm hoping uh, it, this one stops at that. Now if you shake hands with this one, they're, it's a firm handshake. And this is a limp. I'm not feeling very good handshake. But... These orchids on this side are the ones from my orchid I already had. And they were in bloom by the end of December. It's amazing. They're showing no sign of going. And these ones, there was two branches. One here, one here, and one over here. No sign of anything happening there. So, um... All I'm doing is lightly misting these leaves and keeping them. I'll have to fix this one so they hold their shape a little bit. So that's what we're doing there. And the dendrobiums seem to be happy in their cages. And I still have the baby here hoping we get a more leaf. We desperately need a more leaf. And another firm handshake over here. One of my medium traffic cones. I hope to make some of. And uh, it's still in flower since December also. But what I've noticed just with this little bit of warmth, I see a lot of new leaves coming. There's one there. Maggie, you stay with mom. Stay with mom. Good girl. Don't want to go in and get into trouble. Do we? Huh? No. Yeah, come on. Over here. Good girl. Come on. Up here. Yeah, you stay with Mom. Yeah, you stay with Mom. Be good girl. Okay, so there's some new leaves coming here. And lots of new leaves coming in here. And this, the warmth is starting. Roots are coming. And of course, this is the big lip fell that I did not let flower at Christmas, but definitely wants to spike and flower now. And this is how the babies sit in the back behind the other orchids, but there's still, you see a dappling of light coming through to them. And water in the bowl underneath. So lots of new leaves from this warmth coming all over. And uh, so I'm going to shut off and I'll be with you in a minute. I have to change for a job. Right, Maggie? <laughs> okay. Have you ever tried to set up your video when the sun is shining and where I am is in the shade? But you can't really see if you've got everything in. But I will be showing you close up. But I will have to tell you the story first. Yesterday morning, like I always have to weed up through here. And there's every year I spend more time trying to get the weeds out of the rock path. 
So I had come out yesterday morning and I'd started lifting these big rocks right here. And I thought, well, if I do a little bit each day, it'll kind of be slow and steady like the turtle, but I'll win the race. So <laughs> I was out here lifting the rocks and I was going to make everything nice and put down new backing. We got a whole big roll of double plastic out of garage sale for like next to nothing. So I put it quite thick, left old stuff, and Jack came out and he said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I thought I'd slowly redo this because it's been like this for so many years. When we bought this house, there was not one plant. This was all grass, all this whole all the way to the hillside. No trees, no nothing. So this has been like this a long time and the weeds and things have finally started to grow through. And yes, it was plastic on the bottom then too, but it's lasted a lot of years. So he said, well, um, you can't be lifting those big rocks. And I said, well, I'm bending my knees and I'm doing it, you know, properly. And he says, that's it. So the next thing you know, he said, I'm listing all the big ones and we had a pile of rocks over there and a pile of rocks way down in. I'm gonna show you closer, better. And it took uh, all day till coffee time when we stop at three for coffee. And uh, we had all the rocks off. You know what, they came off easier than they went back on. It was like a jigsaw puzzle. And when we put them on, like last time, uh, the spaces were bare, so we were short rocks, so we had to steal some from here. But this is what we got into yesterday. Once in a while, I'm going to show you on the end of the video what we've been doing. So, <laughs> anyway, we were tired, and then I have one of those Dr. Ho massage chairs. So, um, when I first got it out of Brad's Hill, of course, it hurt like anything when those big balls went up and down. You can turn the heat on, it hurt, but it never hurts anymore. It just feels good. And then you can set the one that goes on your neck so it's higher or lower. And you can it's actually very relaxing. And it works. Like, we both felt really good. We both sat in our Dr. Ho chair and we felt pretty good this morning. So I'm going to show you a close-up at this and then the yellow pennies. Okay can't see what I'm doing here. Okay. I'll be in the shade in a minute. So this is the walkway. It's all rocks, but the trouble is now we need gravel for all between these rocks. And we're having this big discussion and you'll find out where it's coming from at another time. So there we go. And this is how we walk up to to where Jimmy, our guitar player, is. So he's there, and that path gets used a lot. So let's just come up here for a minute. Some things, this is spring, and uh, things are starting to come in to bloom. There's the painting I did. I thought, you know, just because it's the back of the property and there's a park there, I had painted that mural there. and. And just to make it kind of fun. So this is what we did yesterday. And I think it's going to be fine. And then I, I dug, I, we got three rhubarb plants. And I was going to put these on the road free. There's some dug up rhubarb plant in there from this hole. I was sweating like a son of a gun. But I dug that out of that hole. And then I thought, well, maybe I should phone Rosemary before I put it on the road free. And I'd already wrote this. Oh, because they just moved into this house. So, yes, she needs it. So, it'll be sitting here for a couple of weeks with soil on it, and I'll keep it damp. The garden is coming up because we had the rain. We had uh, now the warm weather is just perfect. But we have beets and potatoes and bush beans and tomatoes, and I haven't put the cantaloupes and melons out. Onions and carrots way in the back. And one more thing, I have to show you the yellow peonies. Do you know the peonies are usually all open the end of April, and we had all that hot weather. Then we had that 
little cool rainy spell. Then here they are a month late opening. Very strange. And there's of course the Fernley Peonies. They'll still send out the odd flower. Some of them will have the odd bud on them. But uh, they'll be just a pretty bush that you can put with an arrangement. Oh, they're closed. Okay, they open and they're so pretty inside. But they close at night. So I'll have to get them when, it's, when more of them are open. They're so pretty inside, but they close up at night and it's still early here. So anyway, <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye and we'll see you soon.